I think the obstacles are the same as the op opportunities, is the way we like to look at them. You know, we have this really powerful technological infrastructure that can do really tremendous things. And at the same time, it's never going to be as flexible as we'd like it to be, um, just by nature of, of, of web technology. So, you know, we can deliver news across the globe in a matter of, of seconds or, or minutes, and, and that's pretty amazing. And we can create, you know, really, really fascinating tools for our users to take advantage of. Um, at the same time, you know, those technologies don't allow us to, um, to, you know, tool, retool uh, the appearance or the presentation of every piece of content in exactly the way that we would like. There's, there's a, there are real inherent limitations to um, the tools. So um, it's, you know, it's two sides of the same coin. Sure, we, we often get um, reader feedback of both types, you know, positive and negative, no matter what we do. Um, you know, let me think. Um, there are times when um, things that are, are really obvious to us, you know, and, and we've really tried to design them in such a way that we think will be obvious to readers who and users who have only casual familiarity with the site um, will get feedback that that says you know they have no idea that that uh, um, what we intended was actually the case. Um, and I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head right now. Um, you know, we'll we'll occasionally add sort of alternative views to the homepage, new experimental presentations of our top content um, features like. Um, Times Wire, we had one called Times Extra. We have a social networking layer called, um, called Times People. Um, and these are things that we spend a lot of time trying to make as intuitive and as easy to use as possible. Um, and sometimes, you know, we, we hit the mark and a lot of times people will ask us, you know, what does this thing do that, that you have here? I have no, really no idea, no understanding of it. And it just sort of blows us out of the water that, you know, that they can be so um, you know, what, what we've designed can, can be so as unintuitive as, as the, the reader might be um, interpreting it as. So um, um, that's always, uh, that's, that's, I think, one of the hardest and most, and most illuminating parts of the job is really, really constantly reminding yourself that what's obvious to you is not obvious to the users. I'll tell you about a big project that we finished up late last year. Um, for we ha we have a um, a luxury magazine that comes inserted with a Sunday paper called T, um, and that covers you know um, men's fashion, women's fashion, design, travel, living, that that sort of stuff. Really high end luxury, and um, we had a site that um, we launched in. 2007, I believe that um, you know we felt pretty pretty good about it at the time, but um, it quickly became apparent that it was it was too expensive to produce and wasn't really yielding the results that we were looking for. So we worked most of last year, 2009, really overhauling that site um, and moving it away from what had been a presentation that was really centered around what appeared in print to a brand new kind of user experience that really emphasized wh what we saw, how we saw users interacting with the content. So instead of showing all of the photography um, and the, the photo spreads and the feature stories as the sole m main gateway to that site, we've moved to a new kind of experience where um, the content is um, a bit more atomized, you can sort of access it from many different many different ways, and we're really emphasizing the blog end of the uh, the site as um, the major access point. Because what we saw was that users responded best to our blog, even though it was not the major the main access point. They they responded to its timeliness and its and the the brevity of the content. Um, and so we completely reoriented the site around that, and, and that was something I really pushed for. Um, 
hard in, uh, in you know, late 2008, early 2009, and we were able to launch it late last year.